kind of moving from guard duty, which is looking for threats and unusual behavior and activity in your account, to how do I set up and make sure I have my uh, buckets in a state where I can hopefully prevent some some sort of activity from happening. Uh, and, and that's where Security Hub comes into play. So Security Hub has a number of security standards. So we, we have the CIS benchmarks, PCI, and then we also have the foundational best practice checks, which span a number of different AWS services and provide our recommendation as the best way or most, most secure method for configuring these individual services. We also have the concept of insights, which allows you to look at the findings that come from both uh, third-party tools, services like Guard Duty, as well as the security hub checks, and combine them all together and to view, uh, you know, by that resource, where, where am I getting the most findings? And as you can see here, most of these findings are coming from Security Hub, where they're looking at the assessment of how these buckets are configured and comparing that to best practice. We also have some from Guard Duty, which we just kind of saw the uh, the, the Guard Duty findings that we've shown, so that we can consolidate these in Security Hub, because every finding that Guard Duty creates goes out EventBridge, so you can have your own automation. But we also send it to Security Hub, and we send it to Security Hub in the ASFF format, which allows you to also get to have that sent out to uh, EventBridge for further downstream processing. So if I want to go and look and see, well, what are these individual findings? I can click on an uh, individual resource, or I can also just uncheck that, and I can view all the the different findings that are associated with the. Um, this particular, uh, all my S3 buckets. So you can see a lot of these are the security hub checks that are looking at how I've configured it and I haven't followed uh, best practices um, configuring any of these buckets in that I don't have a, uh, a policy statement that requires uh, SSL access to the bucket. And in some of these I also don't have encryption turned on as well, which is another best practice to make sure that you're using encryption. Particularly it's a good practice to use KMS encryption uh, to protect the objects in those buckets. So you can see here now I've got that. I also can find I have my guard duty finding, which I just looked at uh, in the guard duty console as well. But now I'm able to see my buckets that have um, configuration issues alongside the threat detection and monitoring um, events that are coming from guard duty as well. So kind of moving down the chain here into uh, Macy, which is our, the third service that Hamachi talked about which is again, is really focused on um, monitoring of the buckets themselves and also looking at what data is in those buckets and identifying sensitive data. Uh, again, one of the first steps, uh, like with all of our services is to make sure you have it turned on. Um, Security Hub, uh, Guard Duty and Macy all support our integration with the delegated administrator through organizations and all have the auto enable feature, which we recommend that you turn on uh, auto enable will make again, so you don't have to do any sort of bootstrapping or configuration checks when you create new accounts, they'll automatically be enabled and automatically be linked as members to the delegated administrator. Um, so when we think about Macy, again, uh, the typical consumer for Macy tends to be in more data privacy or compliance organizations. And so from a high level, we wanna be able to give you a consolidated view across all of your accounts uh, regarding some key configuration choices that have been made on your buckets, as well as some metrics around total storage and total number of S3 buckets. Uh, because I'm viewing this from the, the lens of the delegated administrator, I can see all of the accounts within my organization. You also do have the ability, you can start typing an account number and it will show you uh, any of the accounts that you can, you can choose from within your org if you wanna see just a single account. But generally speaking, this dashboard is, very useful to get that consolidated all up view across uh, all of those accounts. And we highlight three uh, kind of top level configuration choices, right? Whether or not the bucket's public, right? It's pretty, pretty binary choice uh, and pretty obvious that you, if you have public buckets, you generally want them to be the ones that you very much expect to be made public. Uh, what the encryption status on the, the bucket is, and, and for this, we're checking the default encryption policy on that bucket. And then we go a little further too to actually look at the type of encryption, whether or not it's using the server-side encryption uh, from S3 uh, with a common S3 key or whether or not you're leveraging KMS for encryption. The third um, thing that we track is whether or not that bucket is shared. And we're also looking at replication in this case as well. That will also generate an event. 
Uh, and, and to understand whether or not the bucket is shared, we're looking at the bucket policies and, and evaluating the principles that have been granted access and, and whether or not they're in the same account as the bucket owner. And if they're not in the same account as the bucket owner, we're gonna cross-reference that with the set of accounts from your organization that you've linked in Macy to determine whether or not you're sharing this internally, like it's a, you know one of your other accounts, or whether or not you're sharing that bucket to an account outside of the Macy organization that you've set up. If any of these change, it'll generate policy findings. Policy findings go out EventBridge and they're also visible in Security Hub as well. Um, and so that again highlights allows them on alerting or automation. If for example, someone were to replicate a bucket to an external account or make a bucket public. Um, these also allow you to drill down and view buckets that match those. So if I click on, for example, encryption none, I wanna see the buckets that I have that do not have any encryption. I can quickly go and filter on any of these. And as you can see, again, because I'm viewing this from the delegated administrator, I am able to see buckets across lots of accounts. If I, if I remove that filter, now I can go and see all my buckets again. I also have the ability now to look at other metadata that we're collecting about these buckets. And again, really the whole point of all of this data that we're trying to give customers is one from a monitoring and an alerting standpoint, but also to help give you enough information to narrow down the buckets that you want to target for sensitive data discovery, right? Doing the continuous monitoring and this metadata collection on all of your buckets is very, very low cost. It's included for the first 30 days in the trial, and then it's only 10 cents a month per bucket. So it's very low cost. It gives you that visibility. Doing the sensitive data discovery does come with a higher cost. Um, and, and we wanna make sure that customers are only doing that in the buckets that you need to do that on. And generally speaking, we want customers to exclude buckets you already know have sensitive data, right? If there's buckets that you know contain PII already, there's no point in obviously having, uh, you know, Macy scan that for you. Other good buckets to, to exclude are things like CloudTrail buckets uh, or ELB access uh, log buckets, things where we're generating that content and you know that there's really not gonna be any sensitive data in there. But again, we give you all this metadata around what types of objects are in the bucket, how many are classifiable, how many are not classifiable, which will help understand the cost of performing the analysis, what the encryption status on the different objects are. So from the bucket level, we look at what the default policy is, but there could have been objects added to the bucket after that policy was changed to enable encryption that would not have been uh, automatically encrypted. So we'll let you know if there's any uh, objects in the bucket that do not have encryption enabled, even if the bucket has a policy set for encryption. Um, it's blocked public access settings and the effective set of permissions. And then again, whether or not it's replicated and if so, if that replication is to an external account. So again, when I look at all of this data, it's helping narrow down and focus my sensitive data discovery on the buckets that are more interesting to me because I do not expect or I really do not want sensitive data to be in those buckets. Once I've identified the set of buckets I want to do my sensitive data discovery on, I then can select them here. And these do not have to be in the same account. So I can create a job that has buckets that span multiple accounts. They will all go run independently in those individual accounts. So the next step you'll see here is I get kind of a shopping cart where I can go and see what are the things I selected, what is the number of classifiable objects that we believe are in there, and their size. And then an estimated cost that takes into consideration um, the classifiable object size, how many of those are compressed, and then we apply a, a, an expected compression ratio to that in, in order to come up with an estimated cost uh, for those compressed objects. Uh, the next step is to set the scope and the type of job. So, uh, you know, one-time job, kind of pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we're going to run once and we're going to be done. Generally speaking, we see uh, customers opt for more of the scheduled job, which allows you to kind of set it and forget it, where uh, these are buckets I never want to find, you know, credit cards or driver's licenses or sensitive data in general. And I want Macy to scan everything that's there now. And then going forward every day, we're not going to rescan the entire bucket. We're only going to scan new objects that are placed in the bucket since the last time the job ran, which if you choose daily would be yesterday. You can also have us do weekly or monthly. Um, but again, we're not rescanning the entire bucket. We're only scanning the, the net new objects. Uh, kind of to one of the questions that came up there at the very end was, 
how can I narrow down besides just giving an entire bucket? And as Imanchu mentioned, this is where you can give us additional criteria. So things like extensions, dates, or prefixes, which is a fairly new addition. So you can do including and exclude criteria on any of these matches. So you can do it by tags, by size, prefixes, date modified, or file extensions. The next uh, thing that you get to configure for this job is custom data identifiers. So in Macy, we have a large number of what we call managed data identifiers. These are things that are globally applicable, right? So credit card numbers, social security numbers, passports, driver's licenses, names, addresses, things that are gonna apply for, for all customers, really. Uh, however, we also recognize that a lot of our customers have sensitive data that's kind of bespoke to their their company or their enterprise, things like how you would store your employee IDs or customer identifiers, patient IDs, right? There's any number of things that might be sensitive and are, are kind of unique to your business. And so we allow you to configure custom data identifiers using regular expressions, and you can enable or disable them on a per job basis. There is no additional cost for adding the, the custom identifiers. Uh, kind of the last step is to give your job a name, right? And once you give it a name and a description, you'll go here and you'll get to review the different settings as well as the kind of estimated cost. And then again, as you can see, we recognize that there's two objects in these buckets that I picked that we're just not going to uh, attempt because we know they're not classifiable. And we also know that there's some compressed data in here. And so we've estimated based on a, a kind of the data that we see that it'll uncompress to a 3x ratio, and we come up with a total cost. Um, I'm going to output all of these findings will go to EventBridge, similar to other services. Um, but we also, within Macy, write a long-term storage also to an S3 bucket that you can uh, set and configure yourself. So the output of these, again, they'll go out EventBridge. They're also viewable in the, um, the console themselves. Um, findings will be classified as personal for findings that contain personal information. Financial, if there's financial information, credentials, if it is a credential, and multiple, if it contains different uh, a combination of, of any of those uh, three. So I just want to highlight a few things that, that show up in these findings that can be very useful and can help you make automated decisions as well. So first and foremost, we, we include all of the information that we have about the bucket that this lives in, and like whether or not it's public, whether or not uh, public access is turned on, for example. And then same for the resource, uh, is this resource, because resources and individual objects can be made public as well. So we'll look at that level in addition to the bucket. Um, and then we're gonna tell you what we found. So we never make a copy or store a copy of the sensitive data itself. We only contain references to it. So in this particular object, you can see we found names and social security numbers. And I found 39 names and 38 social security numbers. And then the next kind of question you're probably gonna wanna know is, well, where did you find them? For the findings themselves, we include 15 different locations, uh, and we'll spread that out over the different detection types. That detailed long-term storage I talked about that goes to S3 will contain every single occurrence up to a thousand. However, for most part, you're generally just trying to spot check these and make sure like, is this actually a name or a social security number? And 15 of those tends to be kind of enough to make a verdict as to whether or not that object is sensitive. The other nice thing you can see about these locations is that we've recognized that this is an Excel document. So we're going to give you the location in an Excel format. So it's on sheet one in, in cell A2. And the, the column name for, for A2 uh, I mean, is name. So that column is name, name, and this is in row A2, sorry. And so you can see that uh, I have that for each of those. And then the same goes for social security numbers. Uh, unsurprisingly, the column name here is social security number. But again, this is uh, out of formatted and outputted to give you information in, in a way that is relative to the file type itself. Uh, for, for things like text documents, we're going to give you line ranges. So because, again, we, there's unstructured text. CSVs will also uh, provide an output that looks at the cell type. Uh, there's no cell reference because it's not an Excel document, but we will give you the column name, its column number, and the row. So again, you're able to view these findings in the console. All of this information, again, goes out JSON to EventBridge yeah, to allow you to do automated response on that as well. 